What was the path that he trod to get to this number two position? Uh, one could say a very prudent path. He has not, he's not let the wheels come off at any point in his career. He's someone who's known as being uh, sort of very safe. He's very reliable. If you send him out to pitch a deal, he's going to come back with it. Uh, he is someone who's liked as well, which is kind of an important point because a lot of, particularly in, in deal land, a lot of bankers don't like each other and are very willing to, to be, be harsh. But Solomon's liked as well, isn't he? Solomon is liked, although I think he's thought of as a much tougher boss than Waldron. Um, John is, is someone who, like, if you ask other M&A bankers, even at other banks, they'll begrudgingly acknowledge that, like, yeah, he's, he's a great banker, but he's also a nice guy. And the reason we care about his appointment, his, his move up, is because as COO and president, he's in the line of succession to perhaps one day become the CEO of Goldman Sachs. Importantly, there's no co-COO or co-president with him. That's right. So Sher was elevated to the CFO role. There's no co-seat with him, as you say, so he's going to be in this job alone. It was really well telegraphed that it was going to be him, but the speculation was really whether it would be him and another or just him. So at least we now have that question answered. And yeah, it's absolutely right. This is the, if you like, the sort of the, the position apparent if you're going to become the CEO of the bank. Obviously, Solomon only just going into that position now, so there's going to be a long time to wait. And the first CEO at Goldman with hair in a while, so perhaps <laughs> the first Goldman Well, you, well may, may, maybe, although maybe being COO, he will lose it over the period between then and now because it will be so stressful. Uh, anyway, it will give us something all uh, 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 something to speculate about over the years to come, whether or not he will indeed take that role. We'll, we'll keep an eye on that and his hair, but give us a sense of who, where the other chess pieces are moved to, because interestingly, the CFOs come down to the trading division, and what happens to investment banking now, John Waldron moves up? Well, I think this is a big win for the investment banking side of the house now to have Solomon uh, and Waldron at the top, who are both obviously from the IB side, and traditionally Goldman has drawn very heavily from the trading side. So I think it will be seen as a positive for that. At the same time, he's going to have a lot more day-to-day -day responsibility, Waldron. So that potentially does take him away from some of the client-facing stuff. But, mm -hmm. you know, knowing the guy a little bit, I would say he's, his key clients he's definitely going to keep. He is the core relationship. He still goes into bat for those guys when he needs them. And actually, just recently in a story we did where we had uh, the Murdochs talking about just how crucial he's been to them personally, Mm -hmm. on a ton of their deals. So I think we'll, we'll still see John Waldron, the sort of client-facing banker, but obviously he's going to have far more responsibility now and just in terms of managing the shop. And you've been working with him, talking with him for years because he's been a deal-maker and that's what you've been covering. Do we presume that deal-making will become a bigger Goldman priority with him as CEO and president? Um, it, it's hard to see it becoming a bigger priority just because it already is such a dominant part of their business. And, you know, look, they consistently have the number one or sometimes number two franchise on the street in terms of the volume of deals and also the value of deals. Um, so like over trading, I, for instance. Yeah, so I, I th I, exactly. I think Goldman are going to, you know, look, they're already strong in M&A. They're going to continue to be strong in M&A. What we've seen recently is that they've hired a lot of senior M&A people from elsewhere. They've sort of refilled that bench of very senior talent at the bank. So I think, look, that's been part of Waldron's push for the last few years, and I'm sure that will continue uh, under him and under Solomon.